So the problem with Sony cameras like the FX3, FX30 and even the ZV-E10 is the lack of EVF. An EVF is an essential bit of kit for me when it comes to wildlife filmmaking. It allows me to isolate everything else that goes on around me and concentrate on the things that matter, like nailing my focus, exposure and framing. There are not many options out there when it comes to third party EVFs, especially without not breaking the bank. And one of the best reviewed that I've seen is from a brand called Port Keys and I picked up their latest version, their LI3, and to see if it works for me and if it's any good for wildlife filming. LI3 is Portkey's latest version of their HDMI EVF. Now this is a great value for money for what I've tested it so far. You look at other brands like Sakutos, Blackmagic, Zcam, these are all a thousand plus for their EVFs. This one will run you around 500 euros, but you can pick it up on sale. I think I got mine for around 420. It also provides a lot of other things that were missing from cinema, cine cameras from the Sony line, like waveform, false color. This can all be provided through this EVF. So it's a really nice add-on to have for this camera. So I wanted to try it out because I've recently picked up the FX30, as you may have seen in my other videos, and one of the biggest issues I have with it is no EVF. I went out to the beach, Almalda Beach, uh, here on the Netherlands, and it was a horrible day. We had rain to start with, wind, you know, sand whipping up, and I was trying to film some shorebirds. I did put it through a lot of punishment, and it held up really nicely. So the latest version, does offer 4K30 up from their older model, which was a 1080 image. And it is crisp and it is sharp. I would like maybe a little bit more magnification in it, but you can adjust the diopter for how your eye sees the image. Now, this may look cheap and tacky, and it is, especially the eye cup that is, you know, fitted with Velcro, but it's not as bad when you've got it to your eye, it's quite soft, it, you don't really notice it and uncomfortable. What I do worry about is bad weather, you know, when this gets wet and this will get worn very quickly, you know, pick away at it, it will soon fall apart. Now you can upgrade the cushion uh, through Porky's website, that just gives you some Plux fake leather version, it's basically that same foam cup I believe but it's just got a you know a fake leather cushion around it. The problem is that the shipping from China costs the same amount as the actual thing itself. I think it was like 25, 30 euros with 30 euro shipping and you can only get it, I found it through Porky's website. So that's a bit annoying because I would like to get it because I think it would just last a bit longer instead of buying replacements for these when you pick away at them. Uh, the other issue is when you adjust the diopter there is a Velcro strap where you can put the eye protection cup down and sticks onto that, nice touch. But the problem is each time you adjust the diopter, you have to then take this Velcro off to make sure it's centered at the bottom to then put it down. Not an issue because once you've adjusted it for your eye, it pretty much can stay there. So there are some holes under the NATO rail, I'm guessing for airflow, uh, but you can see the LCD screen when it's powered on. So I think it's all open in the back there. So I would worry about that being a bit of a weak point, especially out in harsh conditions like I was, sand, seawater or something getting in there, messing with the electronics. So I would worry about that. Now it's powered via the uh, Limo port on the back. Limo are great once they're connected, you know, they're solid connections. It's not going to pull out and then it provides you that with a really nice braided cable actually it didn't feel that cheap at all uh, to a DTAP so you have to be running V-Lock battery or uh, another battery with DTAP coming out of it and I think you can run it off uh, I don't know what the batteries are actually. I think it's a Canon something battery. You can run it off that as well. I have heard that you can power it through the USB. There is a five volt USB port here as well where you can upload LUTs. Uh, this does provide LUTs and also you can update the firmware via that USB. Uh, but if you weren't rocking a 
you know a, a v-mount cage and you just wanted to power it individually you can do that as well now the other ports you have is just the hdmi and it does come with a nice uh, hdmi right angle adapter very solid obviously it's full size hdmi not this rubbish micro or mini hdmi so very reliable connection unfortunately there is only a hdmi in not a hdmi out so that would have been really nice because i really wanted to record what i was seeing out in the field with this unfortunately you're just going to have to take my word for it and it is fully customizable you have four customized buttons at the top f1 to f4 and you can pretty much customize this to anything in the menu you can adjust this to now i have um zebras on one uh focus peaking on two um false color on three and waveform on four and i have to say these tools and meters on this evf are really nice the waveform very clean easy to read i love a waveform so having that is to second nature to me i can i can see straight away what i'm doing false color is using the ARRI color code which i like really like that way of exposing as well with those two things of false color and waveform you pretty much got no excuse to to not uh, nail your exposure now the nato rail is metal uh, i did hear the previous versions were plastic so uh, i think they have upgraded the build quality because everyone you know rants and raves how great this is but obviously they all go back to the build quality is is they're letting them down and i think they have taken that on board with their latest version it is nice you can turn it on and off um, to save battery when you're not needing it that's a, a nice touch i know a lot of the other brands are constantly on so once you turn your camera on it is on which is fine but you know if you're sitting in wildlife waiting you want to keep your camera on standby it means you're draining your v-lock battery by running this constantly when you're not looking through it so it is nice that you can quickly turn off and on and the boot up time is no time at all and the other thing that sets this apart compared to other competition is that there is no built-in fan it's not using active cooling that's why i think it's got the holes in it for airflow but other ones like the Sakutos and i think the zcam they are quite audible when you turn them on because they are using a fan to cool down the the workings of the evf the no ari rosette it would have been nice could you could have you know not used a nato rail maybe used uh, just a, an arm coming off the uh, rod it might have been a bit easier to adjust uh, without all these different clamps and twists and stuff it's great because you have got the flexibility but you have to keep you know unscrewing and i always forget probably in time i'll remember which one does what but i always forget which one tightens what and which one allows me to move one whereas if you had that ari rosetta mount then you could just put a simple clamp adjustable arm on there and twist it that way now the menu systems uh, were really nice to use very intuitive um, simply laid out you know you've got your unit settings itself your function menu for adjusting your dials it takes you two minutes of play time and you've pretty much figured out the whole menu system so it's very easy to do the button layouts they're big as well and they make sense you've got menu in the middle up down and then exit at the bottom first few times you're using it obviously you have to check to make sure you're pushing the right button but after an hour or so use, you start getting the hang of it and you're pushing function buttons without looking. Uh, simple and effective, and that's what you want. Don't try and overdo it. Don't try and complicate things, and that's what this does. It just keeps things simple but effective. So this is only like the first few days with it, and I really enjoyed using it. There's not much to be said about it. It's a very simple, effective tool, and that's what I like about it. It's not trying to be flash or, you know, trying to do everything. It does what it's meant to do really, really well, and that's what I want. They've cut corners and cost fine i like that it makes sure it means that it's lighter it makes sure it's cheaper um, and they put the money on the things that really matter like you know solid ports and connections really nice uh, lcd screen the monitoring tools within it obviously with wildlife this will get a bit of punishment 
and time will tell if it will survive. Uh, but for my initial first thoughts, I think this will be great going forward. And if you've got the FX3, FX30, this, I think, if you're filming wildlife, is a must because those LCD screens are just appalling. I hate using LCD screens. And I don't really like using monitors as well for wildlife filming. You know, when I was out in location the other day with this EVF on the beach as a prime example, you don't want a big flat monitor surface coming out of your camera. The wind is going to catch that even more and, uh, you know, affect your shots. I'd much rather have a, a solid EVF than a big monitor. Uh, one, because of the wind catching it. Two, because it gives you another point of contact. Panning and uh, panning and tilting with your tripod, you feel like you're in with a moment. And also it isolates you. You know, you're not looking for a monitor and seeing everything else. It's a lot more easier to find your subject, especially when you get good at it. When I'm using a mirrorless camera like the A1 or the A7S III, your EVF is at the center point. So it's very easy to find your subject because it is perfectly centered. Now, obviously your EVF is out to the side more. So you have to adjust that. You can't look up at your barrel or your lens and find out okay where you need to be pointing but with a little practice you pick it up in no time and it gives you far more flexibility in the adjustment of your EVF with a third party extension one than one on the back of the camera. Now the one in the back of the camera is obviously gonna be a lot more solid and robust when it comes to the build and battery life and also probably quality as well. You know, they're using, especially in the A1 and the A7S III, they're using a really high-end EVF, but it doesn't give you the flexibility if you're in a hide and you're above your camera, below your camera. This does give you that flexibility. So. There are trade-offs for both. If I wanted to go lightweight and compact, I can still do that with my A1 and use the built-in EVF, and that's great because it means one less thing to worry about. I don't need to worry about a V-lock battery and charger. But if I'm building a big rig out, this is definitely the way to go because it gives you more flexibility and comfort when filming. But like I said before, I'm really impressed with it. I can't wait to try it out some more on some other rigs and carry on using the FX30. It has made the FX30 enjoyable for me to use now, finally. There's not much else to say. It works. It's fantastic. It's simple but effective. It does what it says very well. And that's all I want from an EVF. Without breaking the bank, I think this is a great option to look at, especially if you've got the FX30 or FX3 or any other cine camera without an EVF. This is a great option to look at. So that's it from me. Peace.